Hello everyone. Welcome back to the latest lecture session. Uh, we were looking at suspended solid removal and we know that gravity is our friend, but we want to help gravity to see to it that our job is done faster. So what are we trying to do? We are trying to destabilize the stable system such that smaller particles come together and then they settle down. So destabilization, coagulation and then bigger particles being formed after the initial coalescence flocculation, right? So we are going to discuss the aspects related to coagulation. We looked at two primary variables. One is theta, how much time and how much mixing. So let us look at the typical va values. So it depends on the type of coagulation you want. One is sleep, uh, sweep coagulation. So here theta is 1 to 10 seconds relatively higher compared to the other ones we are going to look at. And level of mixing, you can see that mean velocity gradient it is uh, g equal to dv by dz, that is what we know, right. So, uh, it is 6 to 1000 per second, right, relatively longer times and uh, still high enough mixing, but not very high because you want to have precipitation also being uh, formed, let us say, right, and adsorption taking place. So, now you can compare that with respect to the adsorption coagulation where charge neutralization and maybe initial interparticle bridging is of greater relevance or charge neutralization primarily. So, here we see that the theta is much lesser. In the earlier case, it was 1 to 10 seconds and g is also much higher. Earlier case, it was 6 to 1000, 600 to 1000. Here, it is 3000 to 5000. So, much more intense mixing and relatively lesser time, let us say, right. But in general, we are concerned with g theta. It is not that this is a va same value, even though g theta for this uh, adsorption coagulation might be comparable to the sweep flock coagulation, sweep flock coagulation. We also need to be concerned about g and theta, uh, the independent variables too, right? Uh, because that will also have an effect on the kind of uh, mechanism and how effectively is it going through. So, that is something to keep in mind. Let us go through. So, here we have a problem using the info which will be provided. We want to use or select an inline blender where we are adding coagulant. And what is the data? We are going to use the data from the previous uh, case. And that for that case, I think the pH was 6 in the last session and also something like 12.5 milligram per liter or such, but it should be presented in the succeeding slides. And flow rate is given and water temperature, yes, is also a relevant aspect. And here we are saying that its adsorption and destabilization is the predominant mechanism, not the sweep flock coagulation. So that is what we want to have. Inline blender, this is what we have. And you have different, uh, what do we say, uh, dimensions and such. Yes. So again, let us go, go about and look at it. So we know that we want to get our relevant g and theta values, right? So that is the, at the end of the day, that is what we are concerned with. So from here, I have different uh, dimensions and such. I have the motor power given, so you can choose one motor, let us say, uh, as a trial. Initial one will be trial, obviously. And from the jar test data from the previous or two sessions uh, before, pH is 6, optimum dose, flow rate is what we have now. And we know that for uh, destabilization or charge neutralization based adsorption and destabilization, we know that theta is less and g is relatively higher. And the temperature, why is it relevant? Because the viscosity of water changes with temperature. So, this is the temperature from the, uh, not this is the temperature, this is the viscosity at that particular temperature. So, this is what we have. So, let us go ahead and look at it. So, trial, we are selecting something here and looks like the dimensions are C and D inside the chamber. So, now we can calculate the uh, chamber, let us say uh, chamber volume pi uh, d square by 4. Uh, h pi r square h and we get the relevant volume let us see right let us look at the uh, this thing once c and d so this is the volume of the uh, effective volume of your particular system let us see right so that we got from the table and then the retention time how will you calculate the retention time you we know that we have q so theta is equal to v by q and that is what we have. You can play around with the units and it is 0.5 seconds. We know for what we want, 0.5 seconds is what we want. So, it is uh, more or less fine, right? And what next? G, we need to look at G. Here we are assuming that not all the energy from 
the 1500 watt rated motor power is going to be transferred to the water we are assuming that the efficiency is around 80 percent let's say so effective p is 0.8 times 1500 watts again these kinds of things will be from experience and such if not at least in the homework or exam this will be given so we know that i think g was equal to square root of power by mu into v if i am not wrong right you can correct this variable so that's what we have square root of p by mu right and what else is this v is volume i guess right let me just check that okay no need to check that's what we have volume out here right and from that we will get the g value and g value is this this will give us an idea about the mixing so in uh, this is acceptable i think we were looking at 3000 to 5000 for our particular case so this is acceptable from that point of view right so uh, we looked at or we are more or less done with coagulation so once i'm done with coagulation you know provide enough um, intensity of mixing and enough time for the particles to be destabilized what do they want to do i don't want to continue that further why if i continue that further the flocks or these colloids are not going to come together so we are going to look at flocculation so to take a holistic view so initially we have a repulsive ion cloud right electrical double layer this is what we have after adding coagulants we destabilize them and i guess again different ways so we uh, repulsive layer is neutralized by the coagulant and particles are destabilized right they are destabilized obviously theta was uh, 1 to 2 seconds or 0.5 to 10 seconds let's say so it's order of few seconds that's what we have here and then we want the flocks to come together if we still hold very high g values or very high intensity of mixing the particles are not going to come together so here you want to give greater retention time obviously typically 30 minutes or such uh, and then you will have particles aggregating together and flocks being formed so coagulation and then flocculation right so that's what we have out here so let's move on so what is our goal obviously we want to convert or see to it that the smaller particles aggregate and form bigger flocks that's what we have how does it uh, come about as in now these particles have to come close together right how is it now now they are dish uh, uh, not any more stable they don't have that repulsive layer or relatively less thick the repulsive layer but now they still need to come together so what are the different ways we looked at one figure earlier wherein uh, energy transfer from large eddies to smaller eddies and then to the micro scale it's similar so micro scale perikinetic macro scale orthokinetic and differential settling let's say right so these are the three mechanisms by which different particles can come in contact micro scale so brownian motion let's say diffusion relevant aspects so again brownian motion this is due to the thermal energy of small particles we are talking about very small particles one micron let's see almost virus size i guess so important not virus size relatively higher than virus size it's obviously important for very small particles right again it's caused by brownian motion so macro scale this is based on the fluid flow right macro scale bigger or not bigger uh, macro scale so it's obviously for bigger particles and we want to use it to promote agglomeration too right and differential settling different particles have different settling velocities i think we looked at it in sedimentation and such and then they can come in contact and also when we have different fluid velocities being imparted imparted to the water again these differential settling velocities will also play a role let's see right so differential settling macro and micro scale mixing let's see so that's one aspect to consider and different ways of uh, flocculation mixing earlier we looked at inline static mixers and such but here you are going to have relatively bigger systems at play why why is it that we have bigger systems at play it's because you know that the retention time is not in the order of a few seconds now it's in the order of a few minutes or even half an hour sometimes even one hour so obviously if for the same flow rate if the water has to spend more time right you need a bigger volume theta is equal to v by q right theta is equal to v by q if theta increases v also has to increase so cubical shape typically cubical shape where we have the vertical turbine this is the vertical turbine 
with the drive motor and such. Impeller located at a depth equal to two thirds of the water depth, two thirds of the water depth, two thirds, right? So, two thirds of the water depth. So, gentle, what do we say, flow of water coming in and then you are going to have gentle mixing out here, yes? And then it is going out to the sedimentation basin. Here we are trying to form the uh, flocks here, vertical turbine. Then you can have the paddle flocculators. You can see now that this is the side view, right? Even earlier, I guess it was the side view, side view, and here you have the paddle flocculators. So, by rotating in this way, and you know that different velocities because velocity of this are what do we say paddle here will be lesser than the velocity of this paddle here. So, you are going to have differential velocities being imparted to the fluid, and then you are going to have mixing, let us say, right? Again, water coming in water channel so that there is less short circuiting and also gentle flow of water coming in and perforated ba baffle wall again to create the ideal flow conditions so that again to prevent uh, short circuiting in general and then it goes to the sedimentation basin. So, if I cut it at this section and look at it this way, so this is what a paddle looks like, right? I am looking at it from this way. So, it is mounted and you have the drive and you have the paddles. So, you need to be able to design these as in what is the thick, uh, width of this? What is the distance between two paddles? How many paddles? And such because that will uh, lead to this energy from the motor or the power from this motor being transferred via the paddles into the water. So, that is why you need to be able to design these aspects. What else? Okay. Other than that, you also have baffle channel or hydraulic flocculation. So, you just have uh, baffles, right? Water taking uh, the flow and then relevant mixing let us say. So, here it is also over and under, over and under water comes in, this is the uh, level and due to the head it is going to go over and under right. So, different kinds of uh, flock letters. So, horizontal shaft, vertical shaft and hydraulic flocculation. what are the advantages and such. Let us look at what are the primary aspects of concern. In general, we are concerned with type of flock, how much is the head loss. If the head loss is too much, obviously again initially I need to pump the water to a high, higher head. So, I do not want that to be high, right. So, operational flexibility, what is the initial cost and relevant aspect. In general, you see that horizontal shaft with paddles is best or pretty good and vertical one so-so and hydraulic flocculation also pretty fine, but there is head loss though. So, these are the aspects you will need to uh, consider when you try to balance between your requirements I guess, right. So, again highest energy input potential I guess, you can impart a lot of energy with respect to this vertical shaft. So, you have greater control looks like, we will not go into it in detail though. So, primary design variables, again what is it I am concerned with? I am concerned with imparting enough energy, right through the motors and then the paddles or uh, the hydraulic flocculation chambers such that there is enough turbulence, but not a lot such that the flocks come together or flocks are formed, right? And here, obviously, theta is a primary aspect. Earlier in coagulation, it was the order of a few seconds, and here we know that it is in the order of a few minutes. And as you can see here, G values are remarkably less. Earlier, we were looking at ranges from 600 to I think 5000 G values, right? Here though, you can see that the values are or the level of mixing is relatively less. We are still going to have mixing, but it is not at all rapid. If I have or continue with this level of mixing, what is going to happen? All the particles are going to, uh, what do we say, break up or the flocks are going to break up. Let us move on. So, types of mixing based on paddles, as we saw can be horizontal or, uh, you know, based on a vertical shaft. So, what is of concern? How is it that the energy transfer will take place? So, here it is friction force. Uh, this is coefficient of drag, area and such. Let us see what we have, velocity of the paddle with respect to water, right? And area of the paddle, velocity of the paddle, area of the paddle and coefficient of drag which will be depend upon length to weight ratio, not weight, length to width ratio, let us see, right? So, that is something you can get from the relevant tables. This will be the friction force. How will I be able to, uh, what is that, get power? it will be force into velocity as we looked earlier and the velocity of the paddle. So, force into velocity 
So, that is what we have earlier we had square and now we have cube here right. And if there are different uh, blades or such you are going to sum them up some power consumption over all blades. So, per blade if this is the consumption what is the consumption over all the blades you will just sum them up. So, velocity of paddle looks like we need to be aware of one aspect as in earlier we saw this if this is the shaft and this is the paddle holder these are the paddles right. So, obviously velocity here relatively less higher higher right it is going to rotate in this direction let us say and look at the distance being taken by this look at the distance being taken by this and look at the distance being taken by this all within the same time. So, the velocity obviously is different that is what I think we are trying to say here. So, application of paddle flock later requires our understanding or consideration that velocity of paddle with respect to the water is not the same as paddle with respect to fixed coordinates right that is one thing to keep in mind why here what is vp it is the velocity of paddle with respect to water not with respect to fixed coordinates that is something to keep in mind and that that velocity varies with distance from axis right and as you can see it varies from distance from axis let us say. Velocity of paddle with respect to water depends on velocity of paddle with respect to fixed coordinates and now obviously velocity of water that is what we are trying to see. So, how what is it depend upon this is the ratio of velocity of paddle with respect to water to velocity of paddle with respect to fixed coordinates right. So, again we are taking into consideration both the fixed coordinates and also the velocity of water let us say right typically 0.75 and 2 pi r is the perimeter let us say right and n is rotational speed as in rotations per time. So, this is the distance and this is rotation speed let us say right or you know this will give me units of what now rotations per time ok distance per time. So, that is what it gives me an idea about. So, typically k value is 0.75 velocity of paddle seems to be that this is the range out here right. So, let us uh, move on and I guess this is a good figure you can see the paddles right you can see the paddles and water is flowing in this direction horizontal shaft horizontal shaft and you have the relevant paddles you can observe the uh, spacing there are different spacings you need to be aware of this spacing between the wall and here between the floor and the uh, what is it lowish point of it and also this spacing and then spacing between the paddles and also the width of the paddles and I guess the length of the paddles. So, these are the dimensions that you have to be aware of when you design it. Let us see how we will design it, but again this is how uh, paddle uh, flock later looks like let us see right ok. So, here we see that there are three boards per arm as I mentioned the distance between the boards right ok paddle I guess is the term that uh, encompasses all this uh, setup and then the width and the length these are the aspects we are going to look at. So, this is going to go over and above and over and above that is how it is going to keep mixing. So, at the end though close up of flocculator paddle wheel in the last chamber at the end when the water is about to exit to reduce the g in the last compartment there are now only 2 instead of the usual 3. And in general you know you are going to have multiple compartments as in it is not going to be only one compartment with uniform level of mixing. So, initially relatively higher g may be 50 and then may be 30 and then may be 15. So, this is how it is going to go. So, that is why here they are saying that in the last compartment they have less uh, what do we say uh, uh, close up what is this to reduce the g r uh, two arms that is the term I was using or thinking of. So, they have only two arms rather than three arms why they want to decrease the g right. So, that is something to keep in mind as you can see here the area the area plays a role area of the paddle. So, if you decrease the area right you are going to decrease this uh, power right. So, that is how and again you know that power is proportional to the g value right g is square root of p by mu volume right. So, if you decrease the power you can do that different ways. So, you can decrease the area let us that is what they were trying to do in that particular context. So, in general you have the recommendations again if this is asked in the exam this will be given if it is asked in the homework you can look this up I guess right. G we know that it is what 20 to uh, 50 per second that is what we have. 
So, different relevant aspects, depth should be 1 meter greater than the wheel diameter. So, we know that this is the wheel, so the depth should be greater than 1 meter, let us say, or uh, total depth should be 1 meter greater than the wheel diameter. And again, clearance between the wheels and walls, right. So, if we have the clearance, so this clearance is a relevant issue, right. And wheel typical diameter is 3 to 4 meters, spacing between wheels on the same shaft as in. So, we have different wheels, this is one wheel and this is one wheel. So, we need to have some spacing between wheels, let us say, right. And that is what they were talking about there, spacing between the wheels on the same shaft, rims on adjacent shafts, okay. And paddle width, typical width, typical length, typical width obviously centimeter, right. This is what and typical length 2 to 3.5 meters, yes. And area of paddles per tank cross section, number per arm usually 3. Spacing is usually given at one third points on the arm, but it can vary. So, one third, I guess, if this is the total, right. So, that is what they are saying, one third on the arm, right, and length by width and such, okay. So, these are the general aspects which we will look at when we try to design it, right. So, let us look at the other aspects too. Turbines, they use power number like the mixing basins, baffle channels, we already looked at, uh, looked at it, and around or over and under, over and under, right. This will create the gentle mixing conditions. Baffle channels, so you have channel velocity, right, power and again depending on head loss, you can uh, equate them. This is something we already looked at for the static mixers, I believe when we looked at the power dissipation. So, from that you can equate the level of mixing to the head loss and the retention time, right. So, that is something that you can get. So, how do we get this head loss or such? We have the Manning's equation for open channel flow or from this formula, let us see, right, where uh, for head loss in square pipe going around 180 degrees turn, right, 180 degrees I guess, right. So, 180 degrees turn. So, that is the relevant aspect. So, you can have that formula, let us see. So, G depends on velocity of flow through the plant, okay. This is one aspect to keep in mind. So, it is difficult to operate well at a different plant flows. For hydraulic or these baffled channels, the issue is that G depends upon the velocity of flow through the plant. So, if it is uh, varying a lot, obviously G will vary a lot. So, you cannot control it very much if the flow is varying too. So, that is something to uh, keep in mind. So, you have to maintain a very narrow range of velocity, especially when you are looking at these baffled kinds of, uh, what do we say, baffled channels and such, right. So, that is something to keep in mind. So, 3 flocculator basins, so you can see them, uh, 1 here, 2 and 3, right. These are uh, baffled type, I guess, not baffled, I think, okay, these are not baffled type, both baffled and I guess with respect to the horizontal uh, shaft mixing, right. So, baffled channels, let us see, the flocular, uh, flocculator basins are arranged to operate in parallel, right. All 3 are parallel, they are baffled for end and around. They are going to end and around. Flow will enter through the circular holes at the top of the picture and exit through the rectangular windows to sedimentation basin at the bottom of the picture. Okay, you can see this flow is coming through here. Water will come this way, right, end and around, and then it will exit here, right. This is, I guess, only for baffled. I thought they were also going to have the shafts here looking at these particular holes, but maybe I was mistaken, let us see, right. Interior of flocculation basing showing opening for paddle wheel uh, drive, right. So, paddle wheel drive shaft, okay, this is what. So, you have the opening for the paddle wheel, paddle wheel drive shaft, right. So, okay, baffled walls flow through holes. Typically, the percentage of holes is such that 3 to percentage, 3 to 6 percentage of wall is open, holes. And velocity is relatively less, 0 0.3 meters per second at the opening. We do not want to exceed it. For example, you know, uh, initially area is this and now it is coming through a particular uh, relatively less area. Then velocity can increase if you do not uh, design it well. But the issue is if velocity increases, then you are going to have flock breakup. That is what it is that people are referring to here, right. So, types of mixing and other design considerations. Trade off, okay. If you look at G theta, again, this is for your uh, relevant case of flocculation. So, you can go from diff one end to the other, tapered G for optimal conditions, this is what we mentioned. So, initially high and then slow 
and slower let's say or lower and lower let's say you can have multiple basins and such or you can have combinations that will allow for com common wall and then transport to sedimentation let's see right so that's something to keep in mind so we are going to look at the paddle flocculator design but this will take some time and uh, i already uh, looked at all the or consumed all the time i wanted to for this session but let's just look at the question once we want to design a paddle flocculator and how do we do that or what do we need we need the basin dimensions the paddle configuration how much power is required for that paddle the rotational speed for the following and the rotational speed for the following parameters what is given q is given and they already gave us the theta so from that obviously i can calculate the volume right and they don't want only one compartment they want three compartments let's see right and water temperature is given for that the dynamic viscosity is given and coefficient of drag is also given this depends on length to width let's say right so this is what we have so what are we designing before okay this is what we are designing so water is coming in through here this is the top view the plan right so here g is 40 or was it 50 okay where what's the g g is 40 30 and 20 so 40 relatively more mixing lesser mixing and much lesser intensity and that's how it's going out and here in the side view this is what it looks like let's see so i want to be able to get the dimensions and thus clearances the depths and such let's see and also i'll have to look at the spacing but spacing we already know that it's at one third along the arm that's what we have i need the width and the length of these arms right so this is what we are going to design but for that what am i going to use i know that theta equal to v by q i can calculate v i can calculate the level of mixing required i know that it is 40 per second to the power that's required volume which i already have and the dynamic viscosity which i already have so i already have the power power i can use and put it up here and plug it in here let's say this is the power right and once i get the power i'll have this i already have coefficient of drag i have rho and then area i will get that vp2 i'll be able to calculate and then design accordingly so these are the primarily primary equations we are going to use but this i will continue in the next session thank you